Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, quoting a famous uh, Buddhist expression uh, that coincidentally ha- happens to be the title of a Dion Warwick song. Uh, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Thank you. Um, and you may be able to tell by that title that I, I am apparently going to launch into a, a contemplation of my favorite area of the Dharma, the four immeasurables. Yay. Um, I seem to circle back to these Buddhist basics quite a bit. I guess I think that the that Gautama guy really had some good ideas and uh, they seem to be the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, really, you can look at these basics of uh, Buddhism over and over again and, and never really use them up. Now, I've worked with the four immeasurables quite a bit, or as I like to call them, the three immeasurables. Um, That is only because three of them fit together very neatly in a nice little package or box. Um, The three kinds of love that are defined in uh, Theravada uh, Buddhism. Um, And the fourth seems of a slightly different kind, but the Buddha included all four in the bundle. And I assume that he probably understood uh, why they fit together that way a little bit better than I do. Um, And maybe I'll have a chance to bring the fourth immeasurable in, which is really a good one, kind of sideways, as I focus on uh, one of the lovely three. But first, uh, one of the three. Uh, But before I go to the one, sorry, that's not first, that's second. So here for a starting review are the big four. Um, The first one is metta, or loving kindness, karuna, which is probably pronounced more like karuna if you spoke the original language, or compassion. So that's metta, loving kindness, karuna, compassion, mudita, or sympathetic joy, uh, which is the favorite of a couple of us around here. And the fourth, immeasurable, the odd immeasurable out, but not really, upeka or equanimity. Uh, For the Pali scholars out there, I apologize for my pronunciation in case it's not quite right. Uh, At least I didn't make the obvious meta joke using it as part of the title of the song with my Brooklyn accent, I meta on a Sunday. That's my second song quote for the day. Uh, Compliments of the Shirelles, and later aptly covered by Laura Nero with Patti LaBelle backing her up. Or to suggest that the parent company of Facebook, which is also called Meta, coincidentally, would be a better and kinder company if their name was spelled with two Ts. But enough of that. Um, Anyway, To continue uh, our quick introductory review, which may turn out not to be that quick, uh, I'd like to present metta or loving kindness as the basic way in which a Buddhist holds all living beings. If we see that we are all connected and that we are defined by our common living quality uh, rather than separated by a separate sense of self, then loving kindness is our basic default attitude or way of feeling towards others. It's as though you met a stranger and then suddenly realized that you recognize them, an experience that I've had before, and that they are actually someone you know and like. But instead of that being based on some personal characteristic of theirs or from sharing a personal history that connects your sense of self to theirs, um, Instead, you care about them just because you recognize their basic humanity or their existence as a sentient being just like you. In other words, it's a common sentient being relationship rather than a separate self to separate self relationship. So I'll get back to that uh, 
that quality of meta and in, in a little bit. Meanwhile, taking a look at the other two types of love in this group, I see them as direct offshoots of meta. Meta is the center of our emotional relationship to others. Now, this may cause some to chuckle or drop their jaw because there's apparently a lot of negativity in the world, in case you haven't noticed. And not necessarily a whole lot of meta being expressed. And that is because of the qualities of samsara, the mixed up world of change that we happen to have found ourselves in, maybe not by coincidence, and its particular way of expressing what are called the three poisons in Buddhism, greed, hatred, and delusion. There seems to be a lot more of that than of loving kindness in our world, but our Buddha nature is always there, knocking on the window from inside and outside to get our attention, and its nature is loving. So the next type of love, directly connected to metta or loving kindness is the famous one, which is the basis of Mahayana Buddhism known as the big vehicle. And that is karuna or paruna or compassion. So if a squirrel comes over to us and runs around and we're watching the squirrel, metta might be appreciating and liking that squirrel, delighting in its existence um, just because of how lively and lovely it is as a being. It's not like we recognize that particular squirrel and say, oh, I know that squirrel. I like that one, but I don't like this other squirrel. Um, so if that is meta, then karuna or compassion kicks in when the squirrel is in trouble. Finding a wounded squirrel, we see it suffering and we want to try to help it. And most people would feel that way. It could be as simple as calling the animal rescue squad, which would be the embodiment of compassion for animals along with similar organizations. But the feeling of compassion is a little different from meta. With compassion, we feel caring, wanting to help, and we may even feel sadness for the pain and suffering of the wounded animal. We might very well feel that way. In other words, compassion involves empathy. We care about other beings when they're in trouble. And the basis for that, the foundation of that is that we care about them in the first place. The third form of love in Buddhism is uh, my personal favorite, just because it's really interesting, is sympathetic joy. And um, this one is important too, because sometimes we're not doing so well, but we perceive that someone else is doing a little bit better and the old poisons kick in. They don't deserve it. Why didn't I get it? If I get a chance, maybe I'll pull them back down to where I am. And if you have that kind of competition going on, it's kind of hard to make progress. But instead, ideally in practicing mudita, uh, sympathetic joy, when the other guy or gal gets the promotion instead of you, you would be happy for them. <laughs> yay them so uh, that's something interesting to sit with and of course that's an extension of meta if your nephew or your husband got a promotion you'd be thrilled for them you wouldn't think why didn't i get it would you well most of us would not so if your basic stance from the point of view of meta is that we're all connected and you love all beings then you care about their success as though they were your nephew or your husband Yay squirrel, yay flower, yay bee, yay coworker. So getting back to Metta, the Buddha recommended that we cultivate this sense of loving appreciation of all beings. As the other kinds of love suggest, all good things come out of this sense of appreciating all beings. Um, and in doing so, uh, we take a big step away from the three poisons, which, as their name implies, are poisonous. Uh, it doesn't feel good to receive them, but it also doesn't feel good to produce those feelings of uh, anger and, and uh, hatred and greed and jealousy, etc. Um, so more love, less hate. Uh, more love, less greed. More love less delusion because we're all connected. 
Uh, Buddha even suggested that if we cultivate metta, it's one of the easiest routes to entering the deeper jhanas and going into a deep meditative state, into the deeper samadhi states, where everything is very nice for a little while, which is not bad in our very turbulent world. Um, the Buddha called the jhanas, quote, a pleasant abiding in the here and now, end quote. And that was a very big compliment coming from the Buddha. He didn't praise just anything. So metta will not only lead to treating others well and being nicer, which is very nice, but also will put ourselves in a much nicer state. And this may be where that fourth immeasurable equanimity may come in. Uh, because as we settle into a more balanced and happy state, our equanimity definitely increases and we may feel a basic okayness, a relief from dukkha or suffering that we may not normally experience. And that kind of teaches us in a way how we're supposed to be. So it's nice to have that experience and be able to register that. So how do we cultivate metta? Well, one simple way that we can cultivate metta is to do metta meditation. Um, and there are a couple of ways to do this, but basically uh, we sit and breathe, settling down and cultivating a bit of mindful awareness as we would do when we're doing a uh, normal uh, zazen. And then we focus on this basic feeling of appreciating and caring about all the living beings around us. And we project that loving energy of metta to, to those beings. It's kind of like wishing them well, so it's not too difficult to just think of beings and wish them well and let that feeling come through you and out to the world of beings around you. This is a really nice thing to do and you can go a long way with it, but it's also kind of general because who or what are the beings that you're wishing well to? So there are some specific ways of cultivating metta more fully and bringing them into not only our sense of being, but our sense of everyday life and the people that we're uh, coming to contact with or that we know about and cutting through those big bad poisons. So before I go into that a little bit, um, I'd like to just quote the Buddha a little bit about this subject. Uh, this first quote is from a translator named Ratna Prabha. May all be happy and feel secure. May all beings become happy in their heart of hearts. And think of every living thing without exception, the weak and the strong, from the smallest to the largest. Whether you can see them or not, living nearby or far away, beings living now or yet to arise. May all beings become happy in their heart of hearts. And from another translator, the uh, famous Thanissaro Bhikkhu, who I like quite a bit, um, who you can find a lot of his work on access to, to insight. Uh, this is from the Karaniya Metta Sutta of the Buddha. As a mother would risk her life to protect her child, her only child, even so, should we cultivate a limitless heart with regard to all beings, with goodwill for the entire cosmos, cultivate a limitless heart, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without enmity or hate, whether standing, walking, sitting, or lying down, as long as one is alert, one should be resolved on this mindfulness. So as an exercise that we can practice in meditation, we can start by actually projecting uh, metta, love and caring uh, towards ourselves and fill up with the feeling of loving kindness. We are also living beings and we deserve a little metta too. Um, then as we are full with this feeling, we can think of our loved ones and project loving kindness towards them and projecting metta towards loved ones, and this is an interesting point, feels a little bit different than the normal love that we feel for them. And I don't know if this distinction is always made, but 
our personal love may sometimes be mixed with some other feelings. Like, to quote another song, this one by Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? So we may have demands and expectations for our loved ones. This happens sometimes. And they may interfere a little bit with our feeling of unconditional love. But here, we're not concerned with all that everyday personal stuff. And so we can just feel the basic appreciation and caring that is there for our loved ones as beings, not as personal family members or friends. So it cuts through the personal relationship and lets us appreciate that basic living quality of our loved ones as beings and as part of our collective uh, family of beings. But all in all, it's relatively easy to feel love and appreciation for those we are close to. We know them and we care about them. So the next step in our projection of Metta is to think of those we don't know so well and project loving kindness to them. That means projecting our caring to those who we may run into anonymously around the neighborhood and even those we will never meet in other parts of the world. Then, and this is all in brief, uh, these can be done at greater length or they can be done step by step over a longer period of time. Uh, then when we feel ready to do so, uh, we can take a little more advanced step. And this is a very interesting, uh, you know, Buddha is sometimes thought of as one of the first great psychological thinkers. And this becomes a little more of a psychological exercise uh, if we project loving kindness to those whom we actively dislike or have a grudge against or have resentment towards. Um, using meta projection as an antidote, a medicine to dissolve the three poisons can be very fruitful. So we can find places where we have negative feelings and we can work with that area of our inner life using meta as a solvent or as a medicine. Um, <clears throat> and we can even, when we're ready, take the super advanced step of projecting metta to public figures whom we normally feel angry or unhappy with, such as unnamed politicians of the opposite political party, ones who we don't agree with about anything and that sort of thing. All sentient beings have Buddha nature and they all can use an infusion of love and caring. For those who we feel are misguided, uh, we can be compassionate and wish them healing and true happiness. The compassionate question of the Mahayana, um, how can I help, applies to them as well. Thank you.